We are doing the IT PRAC exam from 2019, but this is the June paper, not the November one. This is the June one. And we are doing the second part of question one. So we're now in 1.3, where we have to find the factorial of a number. Factorial is all the numbers. So if I give the fact number four, the factorial of four is all the numbers from one up until that number. So from one to four, and you multiply all those numbers. So one times two times three times four. So that equals to 24. And if we had the factorial of five, I think it'll be 120. Okay, so that's what we can do. So we're going to go and we're going to get the number from a spin edit and we're going to display our answer in EDT factorial. So it looks something like that. So let's go to our program. So this is what where we were in the last video. So we're going to go here to there's our spin edit, SPN number, there's EDT factorial. And so first of all, we must go get our input. So variable our num of type integer. And then we're probably going to need a factorial later, but let's do that later. So our number, our num. We're going to get it from the spin edit, SPN number. What property of the spin edit do we get it? We get it from the value property. And then you'll see that the value property is a integer. Our, our num is an integer, so we don't need to convert anything. That's fantastic. So now, if that number is a 4, we want to go from 1 until 4 and multiply all of those numbers. Multiply, like that. Okay, so that's that sounds like a for loop. So I'm going to go a for loop. So R is going to go from 1 until 4. But if that's if we get a 4. If it's 5, then we're going to go from 1 to 4. So it's whatever the R num is, that's how many times we're going to do this loop. So I'm going to declare uh, my for loop variable. And we are going to constantly take R and multiply to something. So if I was doing like a sum, if I was adding up all the numbers, you would do something like this. R sum is equal to whatever's in R sum plus r that's added up all the numbers from one to r now we don't have it and we would initialize r sum we would set r sum to be some sort of starting value of zero that's what you would do if you were adding all the numbers but we aren't adding we are multiplying so i'm going to make a variable called r fact short for factorial so we do the same things i'm going to take r fact i'm going to take whatever's in r fact and instead of adding R, I'm going to multiply R. But the moment you are changing a variable, take a variable and change, take its current value and add or multiply or minus or do something to it, to its, uh, itself, before you put it back into itself. When you're changing something like this, you're not changing R fact to just a random, a different, two other values. You change it to whatever it is currently with some other value. Then you need to initialize it. So we... Think of initialization as setting it to zero, but this is a problem. If I set it to zero, then it's going to take one times zero, and that's going to be zero, and then it's going to become a two, two times zero. Is, so zero doesn't work for me. So I actually want what, multiplication. If you times anything by one, it doesn't get affected really. So I'm going to initialize it to a one because we are multiplying. So when we get r is a one, we're going to go one times one, and that's going to be a one, and then r is going to become a two. So what? So one times two will be a two, and then r will become a three, and then what's three times two? That's six. So six will now go into r fact, and then r will become a four. What's four times six? That'll be twenty, and that's the answer. R fact will be that answer, and then in EDT factorial, the prop, the text property is where we're going to put r fact. Oh, but this doesn't fit because this is an integer. And this is a string. So what must we do? We must convert this from a integer, from what it is, to what we want it to become, a string. Okay, so the little trick here is to initialize it to a 1. Technically, technically, you could actually start R from 2 because 1 times 1 is not going to make any difference. But yeah, I think 1 till 9 just makes sense for me at the moment. So if I find the factorial of 4, 24, and if I find the factorial of 6, 720. I know the factorial files. is, I think, 120. There we go. Fantastic. There we go. So that's that one done. Now, last one. This question. So, the character in words in the sentence must be reversed for encryption. The user will enter in a sentence. So, there they enter in a sentence. It's easy sentence. And we must reverse the characters in each word of the sentence. And so, we're not reversing the sentence. You see that? We're not, rever we're not starting with L-O-O -O of school. We're just taking the word the and reversing it and then we put a space and then we take the word boy and reverse it okay so that's quite oh that's quite complicated you can see it's complicated because it's 16 marks okay so this requires a bit of thinking 
So let's see what we can do. There are lots of ways of doing it. I'm going to try one way. So we don't know how many words will be in the sentence. I don't know how many words will be in the sentence. Okay, so that's the one thing I don't know. So what I could do, I know that each word ends with a space. And then there's nothing at the last. So I can do all the words up until the last word. So each word ends with a space. So let's try this. I'm going to try something here. Let's see if it works. We're going to get a sentence from there. I'm actually just save time. This is what I'm going to do. A little trick. The boy walked to school. Just to save time. I'm actually going to put a value into that edit box. So I don't have to keep typing it. And they want the boy went to school. So I don't have to type it in every single time. So let's reverse the word. So let's first of all get that particular sentence. SN of type string. And we are obviously going to be extracting it as well. So um, so we're going to make a new string called S new. S new. So S sentence is going to be whatever's from that edit box with the sentence dot text. We don't need to convert because it's text to text, string to string. So that's EDT sentence and we want to put it into edt reverse so look what i want to do here it's a bit complicated but let's try this i know the boy went to school i just want to take that first little bit there that first bit there up until the space so let's just do one word okay so we're going to find the position of the space so I'm gonna, let's just do it step by step so r space is up top integer Okay, so watch what I do here. Let's just do one word. R space is equal to the position of a space in SN. Now, there are lots of spaces, but it will give me the first space. In this case, it'll be a four. So then I want to do a for loop. A for loop. And we want to go backwards. We want to start at the one before the four. So at position three, and we're going to go two, one. That's what we want to do. So I want to go backwards. So I'm going to start at the position of the space minus one up until up until one. Does that make sense? And we need to declare i as a variable. So this is just so our space. I don't want to go from position four. I want to go from position there. So because we we basically want it to look like this. Uh, we want it to look like that. Is that correct? T N E W. So it's going to look something like that. I think that's what, if we double check, that's what we're looking for. Oh, the boy walked to school, not went. Okay, but you get the idea. So, not there, boom. Let's go. Let's go, boom. So, our space, boom. So we found this position of the space. We want to go from before the space, we want to go from position three to one. What do we want to do? We want to take S new and we want to take whatever's currently in S new and add. S sentence R. That represents each character. But we're starting at character 3 and then character 2. So let's just, and then we're going to put S new into the edit box. Edit box reverse dot text equals S new. But whenever you add it onto a string, just like we did in this example of here, when we added on, when we changed our fact, we had to initialize our fact. We should probably initialize stew. S new must be initialized to the nothing string, which is quite quite. Okay, so this is so let's try this. Let's try this quickly. Boom. So we're going to the boy went to school. So if I reverse the words, it's just going to do the first word. And does it work? Doesn't look like it's working. What's it not doing? S new R space minus one. Ah, we can't go two. It's down two, Mr. Long. We're going backwards, so it's down to one. We're going from three down to one that's the trick there i forgot about that we're going backwards so let's try okay so there we go we've got the first bit right once we've got the first word right then i just need to what i need to do then i just need to add on a space right i just need to say s new is equal to s new plus the space this is before we display it okay so that's going to give me that bit there. Boom. And then I need to do all of this again. So I need to repeat this. I don't know how many times I'm going to repeat this. But I'm going to repeat it 
So I'm going to find the position of the space, but I don't want to find that space anymore. I want to find that space. So actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to add, I'm going to delete from the sentence, from one till the space. So what am I doing here? I'm, I, I'm, I've basically extracted, I've gone from, I found the position of the space. I went backwards from there to there, putting the words together. And now I'm going to delete all of that. So now S sen is going to be looking like this. It's basically going to look like that. It's going to look like that. So we want to do this again, find the position of the space, which would be a new space. And it will do it again and then it'll it'll, it'll work and it'll keep adding this onto s new it'll, it will work it'll do that and then it'll delete it it'll find the new space it'll put it on backwards it's going to work it's going to work it'll find the new space and it'll put it on backwards ah and then we it'll stop because it'll stop there we'll repeat doing this until the position of our space in sn is a zero that means there are no more spaces now the reason why i'm not using our space here is because we deleted we we, we deleted the space here so we need to check over here if there are any more spaces left so if i do that i'm going to be left with everything except for the last word so then all i have to do is just do this again for the last word so so i just need to do this one more time after i've done each and every word i'm just going to repeat one more time go from but in this case, we're going to go from the length because there's not there's no space left. The length of SN and not minus one, the whole down to one and just take that L, put it on, put it on, put it on. So that's just a little ad hack at the end. And then that should work. Let's test it. That's quite complicated. I don't know. Ew. What what are the errors here? Repeat until the position of the space in RSN equals a zero. Position. Oh, no, not R space. Position of a space. Why did I type R space? I've got space in the brain. The position of the space in R set is a zero. When the position is equal to zero, there's no more spaces. That means we left with just the last word. That looks very complicated. There might be an easy way to do this. Did it work? It looks... Is that what they wanted? Yes, it's exactly what they wanted. Fantastic. It worked but it was very complicated is there another way to do it let's think about that if we wanted to be sneaky we could actually not do this last step and what we actually do is when we get the sentence we actually get the whole sentence and we just add a space at the end so we know that every word will have a space at the end so there'll actually be a little space there so that means this repeat loop will work all the time we don't even need to do the last one because there'll be a space at the end which will be the last space so that could work another way what we could do. So this could be quite complicated. So let's try this quickly. So let's take that out. We still need a new string to like add on to. So we could do something like this. We want to go through each and every character. We still want to add a space to the end. I think that's a good idea so that we know when the end is. So we're going to do a loop that goes from one until the length of the string. Until the length of SN. Okay. And we want to, we basically want to check for when there's a space. If there's a space, then there's things that we need to do. So let's have a double check. So if SNR is a space, that means we've reached the end of a word. Then what do we want to do? We want to take S new, take whatever's in S new, and we want to add the space because we want to keep the space but if it's not a space if it's not a space if it's okay this is going to get complicated with the ifs and else end of for loop and this is going to be a begin and end yeah begin and this is going to be the end of the first if part so then else if it's not a space, then what? Then we, we've got letters. Then we want to go backwards. Then what I want to do is I actually want to construct a word. So I'm actually going to make a word string. I'm going to construct the word string. I'm saying, hey, this S word 
is going to equal. Now we've previously did this and we added on SNR, which means we added at the end, but we want to actually add this to the beginning. So we want to take that letter and take whatever we've already copied and add it onto the end of it. So if it's we've so the first one will be a T. Right? And then we want to take the H, but we want to add the H, then whatever's left over. And then we're going to get an E, take that E, and then add whatever's we've got. So we construct it backwards like that. So we can do that for the S word. So we're going to do that. So we're going to construct this little word here. And then if we find a space, then our word would have been finished. So we can actually take S new, and we're going to add S word plus the space. But at some point, we need to initialize this S word. Okay, so S word needs to be some sort of, needs to be initialized someplace. So, so when we get here, we need to initialize S word. So I'm going to initialize S word over here as well, because we added onto it to nothing. But every time we find a space, that means we've got a new word, which means we need to say S word must go back now. After we've added it, we must set it back to a zero, to nothing, so that we can start adding on letters for the next bit. I think that might work. Seems complicated, but it seems like a lot less code. But it seems very complicated to understand. But let's see if that works. I don't know. Hey, it does the same thing. Is it good? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So either way, either way, that's a lot less code. If that makes sense to you, then do that way. If it doesn't, then do this way. Do whichever way makes sense to you. Okay. Oh, that was quite complicated for question one, but hopefully you can do it now. Good luck. Yep, a little tip for this is like break it down into little bits. Get the marks. Extract just one word, get one word working, and then see if you can do a loop around it. You see if it can repeat doing that process for however many words there are. That's how I would approach that's how I approached it in the beginning. For the other videos in the series, look in the description or go to our playlist on our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way. And if you're watching this for exams, good luck for exams.